Hello, this is Michael, and I'm going to be reading Artemis Fowl by Artemis Fowl, The Last Colony by Ewing Coulter. Yeah. Chapter 1 Blast of the Past. Barcelona, Spain. Happy was not a word often used to describe Artemis Fowl's bodyguard. Jo jolly and contented were also words that were rarely applied to him or to people in his immediate vicinity. Butler did not get to be one of the most dangerous men in the world by chatting with everyone who happened to stroll past, yeah. unless the chat concerned exit routes and concealed weapons. On this particular afternoon, Butler and Artemis were in Spain, and the bodyguard's Eurasian features were even more taciturn than normal. His young charge was, as usual, making Butler's job more complicated than it needed to be. Artemis had insisted that they stand on the sidewalk of Barcelona's Casig de Gracia for over an hour in the afternoon sun, with only a few slender trees to provide them with cover from the heat or possible enemies. This was the fourth unexplained trip to foreign locations in as many months. First Edinburgh, then Death Valley in the American West, followed by an extremely arduous trek to Del Delbley, landlocked, Usby Kiston, and now Barcelona, and all to wait for a mysterious visitor who had not as yet made an appearance. They made an odd couple on the busy pathway, a huge muscular man, 40s, Hugo Boss suit, shaven head, and a slight teenager, pale, raven head, with large piercing blue eyes. Why must you circle so, Butler? asked Artemis, irritated. He knew the answer to his own question, but according to his calculations, the expected video vis visitor to Barcelona was a minute late, and he allowed his annoyance to transfer to the bodyguard. You know perfectly well why, Artemis, replied Butler, in case there was a sniper or an audio tech on one of the rooftops. I am circling to provide maximum cover. Artemis was in the mood to demonstrate his genius. There was a mood in which he frequently found himself in. And as satisfying these demonstrations were for the 14-year-old Irish boy, they could be in intensely irritating for anyone on the receiving end. Firstly, it is, hard it is hardly likely that there is a sniper gunning for me. He said, I have liquidated 80% of my illegal ventures and spread the capital across an extremely lu lucrative portfolio. Secondly, an audio track trying to eavesdrop on us may as well pack up and go home. As the third button on your jacket is emitting a solenium pulse that wipes out any surveillance state, human or fair. Butler glanced at a passing couple who are bewitched by Stain and Young. Spain and young love. The man, the man had a camcorder slung around his neck. Butler fingered his third button guiltily. We may have ruined a few honeymoon photos, he noted. Artemis shrugged. A small price to pay for my privacy. Is there a third point? Asked Butler innocently. Yes, said Artemis, a touch testily. Still no sign of the individual he was expecting. I was about to say that if there is a gunman on one of these buildings, it's that one directly to the rear, so you should stay behind me. Butler was the best bodyguard in business, and even he couldn't be a hundred percent sure which rooftop a potential gunman would be on. Go on, tell me how you know. I know you're dying to. <coughs> Very well, since you ask. No sniper would position himself on the rooftop of Casa Mila, directly across the street, because it is open to the public, and so his access and escape would probably be recorded. His or her, yeah. corrected Butler. Most metal men are women these days. His or her, amended Artemis. The two buildings on the right are somewhat screened by foliage, so I handicap yourself. Very good. Go on. The cluster behind us is financial buildings with yeah. private security stickers on the window. A professional would avoid any confrontation he is not being paid for. Butler nodded. It was true. And so, I logically conclude that your imaginary sniper would pick the four-story construction at the roof. 
it is residential, so easy, so access is easy. The roof affords him, him or her a direct line of fire, and the security is possibly dismissal or, more than likely, non-existent. Butler snorted. Artemis was probably right, but in the protection game, probably wasn't nearly as comforting as a, a, a Kevlar vest. You're probably right, admitted the bodyguard, but only if the sniper is as smart as you are. Good point, said Artemis. And I imagine you could put together a convincing argument for any one of these buildings. You just picked one to keep me out of your line of vision, which will lead to me to believe that whoever you're expecting will turn up outside Casa Mila. Artemis smiled. Well done, old friend. Yeah. Casa Mila was an early 20th century dwelling designed by the Spanish art Nueva architect Antoni Guadi. Yeah, the, 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 the facade consisting of, consisted of curved walls and balconies yeah, topped by twisted ironworks. The walkway outside the building was thronged with tourists lining for an afternoon tour of the spectacular house. Will we recognize our visitor among all these people? Are you sure that he's not already here, watching us? Artem smiled, his eyes glittering. Believe me, he is not here. If he were, there would be a lot of screaming. Butler scowled. Once, just once, he would like to get all the facts before they boarded the jet. But that wasn't the way Artemis worked. To the young Irish genius, the reveal was the most important part of his schemes. Yeah, At least tell me if our contact will be armed. I doubt it, said Artemis. And even if he is, he won't be with us for more than a second. A second? Just memeing down from outer space, is he? Not space, old friend, said Artemis, checking yeah, his watch. Fine. The boy sighed. Anyway, the moment has passed. It seems as though I have brought us here for nothing. Our visitor has not materialized. The chances were slim. Honestly, there was nobody at the under end of the rift. Butler didn't know what rift Artemis was referring to. He simply relieved he was simply relieved to leaving to be leaving the insecure area. The sooner they got back to the Barcelona airport, the better. The butler the bodyguard pulled a metal, mobile phone from his pocket and hit the number on speed dial. The person on the other end clicked up on the first ring. Maria, election, pronto, C, replied Maria tersely. Maria worked for an, for an exclusive Spanish limousine company. She was extremely pretty and could break a breeze block with her forehead. Was that Maria, said yeah. Artemis. Mimicking casual conversation perfectly. Butler was not fooled. Artemis fell really asked casual questions. Yes, that was Maria. You could tell because I used her name when I spoke to her. You don't usually ask so many questions about the lawnmower driver. That's four in the last past 15 minutes. Will Maria be picking us up? What do you think Maria is right now? Honey, how do you think Maria is? Artemis rubbed his temples. This is blasted puberty, Butler. Every time I see a pretty girl, I waste valuable mind space thinking about her. The girl at that restaurant, for instance. I've glanced in her direction a dozen times in the past few minutes. Butler gave the pretty girl in question an automatic bodyguard's once over. She was 12 or 13, did not appear to be armed, and had a mane of extremely tight blonde curls. The girl was steadiously working her way through a selection of tapas while a mere guardian, perhaps her father, read the paper. There was another man at the table who was struggling to stow a set of crutches under his chair. Yeah, Butler judged that the girl was not a direct threat to their safety, Though, indirectly, she could cause trouble if Artemis were unable to concentrate on his plan. Butler patted his young charge on the shoulder. It's normal to be distracted by girls. Natural, if you hadn't been so busy saving the world these past few years, it would have happened sooner. Nevertheless, I have to control it, Butler. I have things to do. Control puberty, snorted the bodyguard. If you can manage that, you'll be the first.